Welcome to another Retro Crazy, specifically my ZX Spectrum series where I'm looking to restore both of these Sinclair ZX Spectrum 48Ks. Then the last video I did a test, both were working absolutely fine, showing a display, that's great. Still got a little bit to go, however, for my original ZX Spectrum, this is pretty much going to be the end of the journey. So there's one modification I do want to make to this before it all goes together. And I'm actually going to add a heatsink onto the Z80. It won't sit in the ULA, unfortunately, the casing won't go down. So I'll need to remove this sticker and now use some isopropyl alcohol just to clean the top of the CPU. Now that that's done, I can take one of the heat sinks that was supplied earlier in the kit, slide it underneath, line it up and press it down. And that is now firmly secure. But before I can finish, I need to look at the keyboard. So let's do that now. This is not my original, this one is. Both really need replaced. However, as I said, I've got plans for this one. So this one's gonna to go to the side just at the moment. This is my original. It has seen, well, much better days. It's, it's corroding, so let's remove it. And I can see straight away there are some tabs inside. So we just need to bend these out of the way. So that's the keyboard, it's membrane and everything off. This can go for a nice clean, because obviously we'll reuse this. The old membrane, yeah, it's for the bin. Keyboard rubber is still flexible, just in need of a really, really good clean to get whatever some of this is off. Corrosion by the looks of it. And while this has come off, unfortunately, it has seen better days. It's badly damaged, so that'll need replaced. So how do we do that? Well, here's one I got earlier, one brand new faceplate and membrane. So that should work out quite nicely. You get the idea. Much nicer, much cleaner. So let's take this rubber membrane and the main casing. Let's go and give it a good wash. Now everything's been washed, I can move on. If you're interested, I use a mix of warm soapy water with some uh, vanish. That just seems to work quite well for me. Uh, then use a gentle, uh, for the plastics anyway, a gentle nail brush to get into, you know, the worst of the nooks and crannies. Now I do still have some residue build up here so I'm going to use some isopropyl alcohol and see if we can get this off. Now because I have used some vanish you tend to find it leaves a very funny uh, sort of slick coating on your hands so these get rinsed off quite well before they come back through. 
but because I'm going to be using a sticky pad on these areas on the new uh, face plate I'm going to clean all of these areas with isopropyl alcohol to ensure that we've lift, uh, lifted off any residue that's left. Now I should actually point out that when I lifted off the face plate I was under the assumption that this had been stuck down. This is an original where they actually had tabs that went through the respective slots and then you bent them over which held the membrane down so this is a very very early one because obviously to cut down in costs these four pads don't need to be done when you're using double-sided sticky tape so that's another sign that this is a very early spectrum just a shame that that is in such poor condition otherwise I would have kept that because that's a nice nice little authentic piece so with that done we can remove the base and we can look at refitting now the first thing we're going to fit is the membrane and it will only properly go on one way you'll see all of these cutouts and the holes they will only go in one way which is that way so we just need to carefully push the membrane through the slots at which point we should be able to line everything up like so and believe it or not that's that already fitted so next we've got the nicely cleaned and washed keys so this was particularly annoying to clean because you need to try if you can to get into all the little nooks and crannies and everywhere but obviously without damaging it I've managed it it's cleaner I ended up going over everything with uh, a piece of uh, tissue and you can see this is from all the nooks and crannies where I didn't want to scrub too much to damage I didn't want to damage this so I was trying to avoid scrubbing as much as possible now again those alignment points come through the keyboard membrane and into the rubber keys spend the time now don't just drop it on and then expect the faceplate to drop perfectly into place it's not going to happen so in the middle there's also these little holes that are molded pinpoints make sure you just go through everything and pop them down now obviously this is different to the ZX81 that just had the thump sensitive keys these actually have the rubber on top which goes down and presses on the membrane so it's it's its first unique feature it's also the bit that most people remember and hate the most so yeah love hate relationship with these with everything down we can start to get an idea before we put this down of what it's going to look like like so and you can see that looks rather nice so our last thing to do is actually get this attached so I'm just going around making sure that nothing has been buckled in transit to me that's sticking out a little bit further than I would like but I don't think I've got a safe way of curling that edge over any further unfortunately so I'll just have to live with that unless I can do a gentle bit of rolling that's actually not too bad so I'll show the top edge of this one is the same I don't want to push too hard I don't want to bend I just want to gently roll 
spend the time now because once you've taken the double back tape off you're not really going back to peel this off you're going to destroy this and I have to say they've done quite a nice job there are some issues the colors are not quite right the red I don't know if it'll pick it up on camera has a banding just on the left side but other than that it's actually not bad at all I'm, I'm quite impressed okay moment of truth let's drop this on as carefully as we can and I'm not going to press down until I'm happy because once we press down that's a permanent fix and there we are all done ready to go back on to the Spectrum now that the keyboard's all done all nice and clean with a new fascia let's finish this particular ZX Spectrum And there we are, all done, all back together, and looking rather snazzy. So let's pop this to the side, we'll do a final check on the keyboard later. So we'll pop it to the side at the moment, because we've still got this one to look at. Now I did pop it in here for testing, but I did say I wanted to do something different. And I was thinking about what I wanted to do different and I thought what sort of ZX Spectrum would I have liked as a kid? Obviously people are going to say oh you know you know 16-bit colors or whatever you know great sound like the C64 but no what I'm looking and what I'm thinking of is taking the original ZX Spectrum and what would have made it better as a, a standard ZX Spectrum. Well, there's one reason I ignored the buzzing from the RF out, and that is because of this, which I got off eBay. You can see the gentleman's email there. And this is a nice, composite mod kit and it's designed to go inside the existing one and this is the reason I didn't want to do the, the basic composite mod that was available as part of the recap kit so I'm going to look at fitting a composite mod is that enough I, I don't think so everybody remembers when they had one of these or if they had an, an 8-bit that loaded from tape the fun you could have waiting for a program to run and load for five, ten minutes only for it to fail. So how can we get round that? By one of these. And this is the TZX Duino. And it's a kit. You can buy them pre-built. I bought this as a kit. What this will do is allow us to use an SD card with the image and load it straight into the spectrum as if it was a tape deck. Getting rid of the issues with the volume and all of that sort of horrible thing. So, great. We've got a way of loading images for the ZX Spectrum and getting them to work. Is that enough? Well, no, the biggest bugbear with the Spectrum, as I said, was this keyboard. And I did only refurb the one keyboard, and that's because I have a little surprise. Or not so little. I have a Sega Emperor keyboard. And this replaces the complete top shell and the spectrum actually screws in the lower screws into here instead 
So that's what I'm going to be using instead of refurbishing that upper keyboard. And that will give me proper keys with custom keys that are already set up, designed specifically for the ZX Spectrum. So first on the list, we'll be looking at the composite out. So let's look at that. So the composite mod kit directly replaces the circuit board inside the RF unit or the RF modulator. And I got the version that's supposed to give the best quality composite out, which is option one on this kit, but you can do option two, which is just the resistor and the transistor or option three, which is literally just the capacitor for the lowest quality. And that's why I didn't go with the retro revival shop version because that would just give me the lowest quality. So I'm going to remove this, desolder all the connections, clean everything up, lift out the circuit board, hopefully, and replace it with this because that should sit in there. And there we go, if I've done everything right, that should now be a nice clear composite video. Still looks like the original, you can tell it's been changed because of the wires. And of course, we can always pop off the casing and see everything that's inside. However, before I test this, we're going to do one more th modification. And I'm gonna take all of this, pop it to the side, because the one thing that the ZX Spectrum doesn't have is a, an on-off switch. Now, anybody that saw my ZX81 video, you saw how I brutalized that by hacking the motherboard up and adding the switch in. But there's an easier way to do it. So I thought I would do it. And that involves a simple on-off switch. and a pair of connectors. So let's do that now. Well, that's all done. It's all tested. It works but not without its issues. This connector went on fine. The plastic that protects it is right at the bottom and it soldered with no issues. Unfortunately, this one was a different story. They're quite cheaply made and what I found, this is the first attempt, was that the design is quite naff because that literally pushes on there and then the whole, the whole lot is slipped and locked in place. And any heat here starts melting this plastic. Here we are ready for testing. And before I put this anywhere near the ZX spectrum, I am going to check the voltage and make sure that this is working as it should. Center positive. Wrong, center negative. Nothing at the moment. Time to turn it on. And you should see, what was it, 13 volts? 13.92. Off. And back on. So that works perfectly. And unlike my poor ZX81, I didn't have to hack the case apart to fit it. So let's reset 
for testing the, the spectrum. So first test is just going to be flicking the switch and making sure everything works and that nothing goes pop. I can hear the spectrum on and back off. Now we'll connect up the composite and we'll see if we get an output on the telly. So we're on channel 36, which as you're aware is RF. Let's flick it on and let's go to the different source. To me, that is a perfectly clear picture. So that's worked brilliantly. The interference pattern you see on camera is being picked up by the camera. I'm not seeing that at all. Um, so I'm not quite sure what's causing it. Try and get it to. Oh, you can see it disappearing as it tries to refocus. So it's it's definitely picking it up. There you are, picking it up on the camera. But it's perfectly clear to me. So with that done, let's head back to the bench. So now we're back on the blue mat on the bench. I've taken the liberty of popping the motherboard into the case. You can see the composite mod kit. We've got a power on off switch, it's fully recapped. What else can we do? Well, one of the niggles and bugbears with the ZX Spectrum is obviously tape loading. It was a nightmare. Your volume was wrong, something interfered with it as it was loading and the game just didn't work. And a lot of the time you could be there for five minutes waiting for a tape to finish just to find out that it didn't load properly and it's corrupt. So how can we cure that? Off of eBay, I got the TZX Duino kit by youmakerobots.com. This whole kit is $16.99 uh, delivered, which is an incredible value. And what it allows you to do is load from an SD card. So you get a consistent volume each time. You don't have to worry about things. It does have a little LCD screen, which comes with the kit and it comes really well packed in this hard case. So this doesn't get damaged. So let's build this. Now everything's laid out, the board's in my jig, not very expensive, and the board itself has some nice instructions, OLED and buttons on the side. That's now all done. I've got a number of buttons. Now he does say in the, in the auction, because it was off eBay, that these are only supplied if he has them. So, you know, no problem there. So it's just a case of deciding what colors. And there we go. So we've got up, down, stop, play, and root. That's all done. That one's annoying me because it's slightly crooked. But hey, that's what happens. I decided to use a socket here. That way I can lift this off. I was having problems actually getting it to go through the board. So rather than do anything else, socket it, all done. I didn't have a socket of the right size. So I've used a longer socket and just remo removed the pins. The board is quite nice, everything's marked up, all the different components with a positive and negative on them as well, where required. So caps go on quite easily. Only the one resistor and a couple of beads which are marked separately in the kit. So our SD card slots here and our little display is here. Now, 
I'll need to get some legs so it can actually sit up instead of just sitting at a jaunty angle. But at the moment, I will be able to use this, no problem. It does require a power supply and then we've got the earphones uh, out to the spectrum. So it should do pretty much everything it's intended. So let's go pop this to the side because we'll test this shortly. And let's look at the last piece of the puzzle. So we've now got some way of reliably, hopefully, playing files into the spectrum. We've got our spectrum with a nice composite video output. We've got it with an on off switch. And now we're going to fit it into a Sega One Emperor keyboard. This is really impressive. This is really nice. It was released in 1984 by Sega Systems Limited in the UK and new. This was £55, $54.95. If you consider that a Spectrum was, you know, starting at £100, this was half the price of a Spectrum. But look at the quality of the keys you get. They are, they are full travel, proper keys, not the rubber membrane. It also has dedicated buttons. So run, list, load, save. Uh, it's got these pre-programmed arrow keys. I mean, wow, you had separate arrow keys. Superb, all of these different little functions that you could have that were separate. And it'll take a little bit of getting used to, but it is a QWERTY keyboard. So, excellent. And I bought this off eBay and it cost me Ironically, £55.50. So £51 for the auction, £4.50 for postage and packing. The membranes are listed as good and they are. They're still in very nice condition, a little bit of wear, but nothing serious. And am I worried that it's going to work? Well, obviously. However, these keys are supposedly good for 20 million key presses per key. I'm going to guess that it's not had that in its life. So I'll give this a quick clean up. And then we actually mount the entire spectrum board like so into here. So it sits on the spectrum board like so. And the screw holes all line up so that it uses the feet, it uses everything, and from the top it just looks like a Sega Emperor keyboard. So let's give it a good clean up, let's mount it, and then we'll test. So that's everything stripped, cleaned, and done. But a word of warning about the, the Sega One Emperor keyboard. These are stickers that are on top of the keys, and the ink they've used is not safe to be cleaned with isopropyl alcohol. I did a test a couple of areas and both the black and the red started running. So do not use is isopropyl alcohol to clean the top of the keycaps. Not advisable. Now that everything is clean, shiny, let's build everything back together with the ZX Spectrum. And there we are, fully assembled. Spectrum on the bottom, keyboard attached. And it feels remarkably heavy for what it is. So let's drop down and let's go testing. So ready for testing. I've already got everything set up for the Sega One Emperor with the modified ZX Spectrum, the composite video. I've got the TZX Duino programmed. I'll pop a card up showing the software and it literally is a case of install the drivers for the Nano and then simply run the software. It tells you on the front of the board it's OLED so select that option and program it. Once it's done you power it up 
and immediately it comes up and runs. And let's go straight to loading and see what happens. Keyboard's working. And let's play the file. That seems to be running, so let's just fast forward through this part. And there we go, it's all loaded, yay! Hey, I can't believe how, how retro that is to me, how many memories it brings back of jetpack on the ZX Spectrum. As I say, this was the first ever game I ever saw on the ZX Spectrum and it was just amazing. The nice thing about the TZX Duino, and I don't think it'll have picked it up on camera, is on the display it actually has a percentage showing you how much of the file has been played. And that's superb because it gives you an idea of how long it's going to take. So, 5 starts the game. Yay! First level complete. Well, that is a completely successful setup. I'm really, really pleased about that. <laughs> So that's a swapped over to my original ZX Spectrum. Let's power it on. And of course, swap the source over to TV. And hopefully, Keyboard is working. This time. We'll try something different. Now, I'll try and show you the counter. And there we go. Hopefully you can see the, the percentage going up. And everything running. Ah, this brings back so many memories. So many, many, many memories. And this is just superb for the price. It's not speeding up the loading, although I did note in the menu system there is a fast load option. However, this is just superb. Well, let's find out what you think of this game. Are you ready? You've got to collect all the eggs and you've got to collect all the bird seed while avoiding the other birds. All right, so there's the bird seed, there's the eggs, there's you. Watch out for the birds. You've got to push hard, you can't. Remember, it's up. You're not right on that then. Move away. Here comes the bird. Got you. You've got to... Right. Watch. And he's pressing hard. No, no. Watch. Press up and then run. And you'll do it automatically. Yeah? So, if you press up as you're running, or down as you're running, the minute he gets to a ladder, he'll do it. So give that a go. You've got to run towards I'm and press hard. Hands up. No, keep it pressed. That's it. It's down this time if you want to go back down the ladder. Yep. 
you're not used to a keyboard. No. You want to see how I do it? Ta da! How do you do? <laughs> All right. No, M. M was your jump. Yeah. <laughs> That's the wrong key. Just jumping for the for the sake of jumping and bouncing off everything. <laughs> that. Are you pressing up? It's okay. <laughs> ah. I just died. Yep, you're dead. Okay, so this was my second ever computer, and this was bought for me by Grandad. I still don't really get how to play it. It's okay, but it's a bit different having to use a keyboard, isn't it? Is it what you're used to? Yeah. Replace stuff in the well, this is how computers were, and you heard the loading noise it made. That's how it made noise all the time. So, successful restoration of two ZX Spectrums. You and, see me no reflection. <laughs> yeah, and more importantly, both you and I. I've played on this ZX Spectrum now. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. So from both my daughter and myself, we'll see you on the next Retro Crazy. Bye. Bye.